All right, so I arrived at Mike and Mary's house, and first off, beautiful home, but as is such with a lot of beautiful homes, open floor plans and lots of windows, light, multiple points of entry, which is really cool to live in, but it makes security a little bit of a challenge. I started off by avoiding going in the house, and I just did kind of concentric circles around it, and I thought, if I was a bad guy, how would I hit this thing? And uh, so I was able to center in on a few places where we need to do lights and where we need to do cameras. We sat them down at a table went over all of this, including a detailed plan of how we are going to be able to defend this home. But really, first and foremost, before we have to deal with defense, how we do from deterring someone from ever picking that home as a target, preventing access, getting early warning, a real holistic home defense plan. And that's what we're driving at for this day. <laughs> Trump skills. He's back wonderful. I didn't grow up with it in a family where guns were ever around. You have some shocks on that car with a slight bend. You have these concentric circles way outside your home so that they don't even want it. Hey, get out, get out. Yeah, shooting's fun, man. But before we jumped in, I wanted to hear kind of some of the stuff that you know you should be doing already, but maybe haven't gotten around to. So what's some of that stuff? Well, I, I think that we need some sort of alarm system um, that could um, alert us. We've got a lot of points of entry at our house um, that are far away. There's one down in the basement that I feel like people could get in and we'd never even know. Yeah. Um, we would never hear it. Thank you for saying that good. And we've already made some big steps. We did two days on the range and we are feeling good with guns. Yep. Can you, I mean, you were hitting some far away targets Excited. too. Can't wait to go to the range. I was, I, <laughs> the ins my instructor heart was bursting with pride mm -hmm. for you guys. So good job. And that's a big jump. But what my goal is that we would never even need the guns. We would have a plan that was so good. Bad guys would look at your house and be like, yeah, no thanks. I'll go to someone easy. And that's really the big thing is let, let's make, let's with our safety protocols deter to them to such a, a point that they don't even try. As a fail safe, we want to make a final defensible plan that if they do get in and say you're not home or you are home, we have a plan that's already sketched out based on your layout so we can take advantage of different pieces of cover and if somebody's coming for you and they want to fight, you give them one that you walk away from and they probably don't. So that's kind of the big security idea where we have these concentric circles way outside your home so that they don't even want it. Then they get past that. Maybe they press even farther and they're like, whoa, they've got all these early warning things. And then they press even farther. I'm like, I can't get in even if I tried. And then they finally do get in. So eat at each concentric circle is an, uh, a get away, get away, get away. Uh, type way. Does that make sense? Yeah. What I wanted to do now is give you kind of the uh, bad report card. We've done some good stuff, but we've also got some stuff we got to work on. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, this is called a penetration test. It's a bit of a security audit. And what I did is as soon as I came here, you notice I didn't come in. I just like hung out outside your house for like half an hour. And what I'm trying to do is put my mind in the mindset of a bad guy, as hard as that is, uh, and walk around your house and think, how would I gain access to this? So imagine the lights out and where are your lights? What would this look like in the dark as well? And how would I gain access to that house? You start with the outside looking in. And so that's basically what I do. I've done that to my own houses as well. And then I'll end up bringing up a floor plan or something like a Google Maps. And then you just hit print. And then you've got like a 30,000 foot view legend, like we have your floor plans here, which is really cool. And now we can start constructing a plan based on how the bad guys may come at you and how to deter them from ever even picking you as a target. You copy? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I started doing, going to tactics mine. I'm like, you copy? Roger. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah, I'm very sorry. All right, let me uh, delve into some of more of the negative stuff. My big points of concern are little paths. There's one over here on the other side of this hammock right there, you can see, and it'll go way back to this huge high traffic bike path, which scares the mess out of me. There's also another path right here, and it's a wider trail. It'd be very obvious to someone on the bike path, and it really comes right up to all this vegetation and these trees right here. I don't like this because it allows people to get here quickly and kind of hide in this tree line to get pretty darn close to the vehicles and to the house without anyone being really aware that they're even there. Uh, we've got no video cameras anywhere, and that's your early warning. Now you get, I mean, it's real cheap and easy to get some of these Wi-Fi cameras set up. They can send alerts to your phone immediately, and you can set the sensitivity areas that it's really keying in on, and you want to kind of wrap your house in early warning video and that can save your life and now you don't have to be paranoid in the middle of the night when he's gone because your video cameras never sleep and they'll let you know and you're like i wonder if someone's outside and you pull up your magical supercomputer phone and you're like nope and then you sleep like a baby so uh, I, I want vegetation not uh, setting them off so I have motion activated alerts but i'd like a couple cameras pointing in to see wide shots of the house and then I want cameras on motion activations on all the key points of entry. I definitely want one down there at the basement, uh, right over there. And I also want a floodlight down there too. Yeah, a light right here, so floods going this way, floods coming out all this way as well. And also on all four big corners of the house, lights on facing out. Other than that, I wanna look through all the points of entry the main front door, back door, basement door, and I want motion activated lights there, so as soon as they come up, they're just hit with blinding light, and that'll both alert people inside the house and let the bad guy have that oh no moment uh, where they feel like they've been caught, and hopefully it'll scare them off a bit. Fixed lights that are a deterrent, and then you have those motion activated lights, which is early warning, and you need that stuff because they're ambushing you and you're out of time. Uh, there's uh, no shutters on some of yes. these windows, which is really upsetting. I think about this tree line behind us, this and this door and this door. All of this is wide open, and when lights are on here and off there, people can literally stand on the porch and mm -hmm. stare in. You won't see them, mm -hmm. and they'll see you. Uh, bad guys, they follow a predictable criminal planning cycle where they pick a target, and they want an easy target. They, an easy target, something that they can get to easily, all these paths of approach. Mm -hmm. And then the next part is they always gather intelligence. It's surveillance, always. From the pickpocket to a sophisticated bank robbery, they're always gathering intelligence, and they will on you too. Yeah, the most common points of entry is going to be front door, and then the next one will be the back door. And then after that, they start testing windows. Uh, no door reinforcements are anywhere. I can kick open that door so blooming easy. All these put just really, really easy to get in. And also all your doors have glass in them. So to be able to break that window pane and unlock the deadbolt is really simple. Mm -hmm. You have no door reinforcements. So uh, there's little simple tools you can get to make your doors kick proof. In all my doors in my house, I have something called night locks. And basically it's a plate that you slide in in front of the door. You can kick my doors a hundred times and all you're gonna do is get tired, hmm. which means you can't get in. They tried to get in the door, they couldn't. You hear them tampering with it, then you hear a kick and another kick and all that means you've got some time. And if you have time, you have a chance. Your uh, front window and your bedroom window were not locked. And uh, even when I locked it, I was still able to push the windows apart and pull it up and so, our house is never really secure. And sometimes people are worried about um, someone breaking in when you're sleeping. What I worry about a lot of times for my wife is somebody, uh, somebody breaking in, maybe the rear door or wherever, while we're gone. Then she comes home with the kids and they're waiting for them inside. So the door closes and now she's in a really bad spot. I need my alarm system watching, my cameras there, all my points of entry uh, all my locks so that I know when I, they come home, no one's in there waiting for them. And you got to have that. Also, no security signage. Even if you don't have an alarm system, put security signs around that makes people think that you do. All right, so this doesn't even have a lock on it. So easy point of access and pretty attractive. Same thing here. 
And then this door doesn't even have a deadbolt on it, meaning with a credit card, I can get in this house like that if I didn't use the open windows already. Another entry point would be downstairs right there. That was really attractive as well to be able to get in. So you already thinking. That's the one I worry about the most. Got it. All right, so I'm at the front door. Again, I want motion activated lights and a camera here. I'm checking underneath rugs, inside and around flower pots. I'm looking up here to see if I can find a hidden key. That's kind of bad guy 101. Those are places they would check. The door is unlocked in the middle of the day and the window was wide open when I got here. Again, not locked. All big no-nos, guys. You gotta do better than that. I want you to just start building it in, and that's what I want for everyone out there too, is to just pick something and do that one simple thing. And then pick something else that's next important and do that next thing. Technology is only as good as the habits of the people employing them. So if you have an alarm system, but you never set it, you're an idiot. <laughs> you gotta set it. You got dead uh, deadbolts, but you never use them. And you're, during the middle of the day, your house is always unsecure. Your windows have locks, but you're not using them. And I'm like, you gotta use this stuff and form habits. What can be overwhelming to folks when it comes to home security and kind of make them say, hey, I'll tackle all that later when I have a little bit more money and a little bit more time. That happens to everyone, but what the real encouragement was is guys, just choose one thing this month and let's say, hey, let's add some little braces to the door so that when we're in for the night, we can do that and our doors are now kick proof. And next month, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some Wi-Fi simple install cameras. The next month, eh, we'll throw up a couple motion activated lights. So don't feel like, man, the ninjas are coming for me. Let me do all of it right now. I'd rather have just a simple idea of let's just do this one thing this month and make it a little bit more easy. Hey, take a security sign, even if you don't have an alarm, and put it in your front yard and maybe the side yard. Just those few dollars expense that it would take to do those could dramatically, by 300%, according to some statistics, increase your chances of uh, not being victimized in home invasion or burglary. So that's the kind of stuff that we were going through, but now we want to really pull it all together, test it, and throw them in some scenario-based stuff, but you'll have to tune in for episode four for that. Here we go.